directions. Thompson's point. This is the direction of the travel of the boat. The red line is the port side, 50 meters out, so it shows you the range. And we're heading towards these dots, which represent the location of the little boat at the bottom of the lake. Now this is a log right in here at the bottom of the lake, probably 30, 40 feet long. Yeah, these are more fish, schools of fish right in here. Dirty finger. Oh, this is a beautiful image. You can get to see the, the hatch work, the bowsprit. The Manly sonar images are so detailed, it is theoretically possible for them to capture an image of Champ. And if it's an air-breathing creature, you'd expect it to have reasonable-sized lungs, and we would expect to see a very, very large, huge hit on that. So far in their research, the Manleys have found many historic artifacts at the bottom of Lake Champlain. We've uncovered circa 70 brand new shipwrecks since we started this program, along with a lot of smaller artifacts that have been uh, located. But at this spot in 1990, they also found something unexpected. And you can see that there is an old channel that's still buried, you know, that you can still see some indication of, and then all of a sudden it makes this large drop off into a deeper area of the lake. For centuries, Lake Champlain in the American Northeast and Loch Ness in the highlands of Scotland have been famous for the monsters that are believed to lurk within their depths. Over the years, each lake has generated an emblematic photograph said to be the best evidence of its monster. This famous picture of Nessie, as the Loch Ness Monster is affectionately known, was taken in 1934. For six decades, it withstood careful scientific examination. And then, in 1993, it emerged that the photo was a hoax. This monster was actually a toy submarine, which was modified with wood and plastic, and then floated and photographed. So far, the Sandra Mansi photograph of Champ, taken in 1977, but not revealed until 1980, has withstood scientific scrutiny. It's still a very interesting photograph, bar none, and if it is real, then it's the best of the lot. For some reason, those of us who dwell here in this country seem to have had better success than a lot of people from other countries who've attempted to film this phenomenon. I know we saw something in that lake, and had I not had the photograph, <laughs> never, never would I have told. Mansi says she clearly remembers what happened that day. I want people to know that this is real. This is exactly what I saw. I'm watching out there and I could see, well, like turbulence or disturbance or something. And then the head and the neck right here broke the surface. My legs gave out. I went down on my knees. The whole thing hit me at that point. And I had the camera and I picked the camera up and I took the photograph. It started going down, but it wasn't like just like that. It was, it went down, it went off like this. Sandra Mansi believes she has the best image of Champ. But two scientists may have the technology to capture an even better image. Pat and Tom Manley of Middlebury College in Vermont are on their 80th expedition in their quest to map the entire bottom of the lake. In eight years on Lake Champlain, have they found evidence of Champ? That's one of the first questions that people usually ask us is whether we have seen Champ. And the answer is no, we, we have not. They have, however, found evidence of something else, something that Champ researchers find encouraging. You can see that there is an old channel that's still buried, you know, that you can still see some indication of and then all of a sudden it makes this large drop off into the uh, into a deeper area of the lake this hidden highway runs through the deepest part of the lake if these creatures do exist 
Could this channel explain how they have been able to hide and avoid capture for centuries? Even if I was driving a submarine in Lake Champlain, if that submarine was at a different elevation than we were actually mapping, we'd never see it. It also runs directly through one of the three locations where audio expert Elizabeth von Mugenthaler recorded the echolocations of an unknown creature in 2002. The underwater river channel found by the Manleys runs past Thompson Point, where Scott Mardis has returned for a fourth day. Scott Mardis and his underwater team have returned to the lake on this, the last day of their expedition, with their camera lure. Today, they've enlisted the help of Captain Al Martin. I've owned Point Bay Marina for 37 years, so over the years I've heard about all the stories that have come, come to light. The final spot Martis and Martin have chosen to search for Champ is Thompson Point, at the bottom of the old riverbed discovered by geologists Pat and Tom Manley. This is the deepest part of the entire lake, and one of three locations from which Elizabeth von Morgenthaler recorded an unknown creature echolocating in 2002. Everything's hooked up, camera is rolling. At the moment it's 393 underneath the boat. Uh, angle's good, we're at 450 feet on the cable. Scott, what are we seeing? Mostly just water right now. Yeah, I'm seeing something. Uh, this is really, it's really strange. If champ, the mysterious denizen of Lake Champlain truly exists. He is an oddly Frankenstein-like animal, a shadowy creature with curious patchwork of mammalian, reptilian, and fish-like characteristics. This man, like many eyewitnesses, said he saw Champ glide through the water like a large fish or snake. This woman says she saw two Champs, a green one and a brown one, walking on land. This acoustics expert says Champ produces biosonar somewhat similar to a dolphin or whale, but unlike any known creature. And this woman says she saw the creature lift its neck six feet out of the water. That's when she took this picture. I saw something. I know I, nobody's going to believe me at this point. Although Mansi has remained steadfast in recounting this version of events, Critics say there are some problems with her story. Benjamin Radford is a writer with the Skeptical Inquirer, a publication that has long maintained that Champ is a great story and nothing more. If you just glance at the photo and you say, yeah, that could be a lake monster, then it's, it's compelling. But if you take more time with it, if you more closely examine it, if you do the investigation, the story falls apart. Mansi acknowledges that she doesn't remember where, exactly, she stopped with her husband and children that day. I know that we were not into Canada. I know we were on the Vermont side. And I know that it took us probably an hour and a half to two hours to get back to where I knew where I was. But her inability to pinpoint her location makes it difficult, if not impossible, for experts to examine the veracity of her story. And the problem is that in the photo itself, there's almost nothing of scale. There's not like a boat nearby or a person or anything in the, in the foreground or background, really, that, that you can tell how far away the object is. Sandra Mansi said it was, I think, between 8 and 16 feet. Uh, one person had claimed that he had done analysis based on the wave height in, in, the, in the photograph that it was up to like, like, I think, 60 or 80 feet long. Now, which is it? Is it, is, is it, is it uh, 10 feet long? Is it 50 feet long? Is it 30 feet long? What is it? According to Mansi, some experts agree with her estimates. In 1991, an oceanographer at the University of British Columbia examined the photo. I said six to eight feet out of the water this way and maybe eight, ten feet that way, twelve feet. An oceanographer studied the photograph, Dr. Paul LeBlanc, and he tells, according to the wave pattern, it's much bigger than that. But according to LeBlanc, his results are only as accurate as the estimates given to him by Mansi. So what is Radford's explanation for the image in the photograph? 
Uh, I've come to the conclusion that it's almost certainly a floating log. Radford believes Mansi's image is debris carried from the bottom of the lake. I've seen cases where a, a, a stick coming up out of the water can appear to be moving because the wind is actually pushing the water across it. Decomposition creates gases within rotting wood, making them more buoyant and for a brief moment propelling them to the surface before sinking slowly again into the lake. It's important to realize that there's more than one explanation for lake monster sightings. Any number of things uh, that aren't immediately identified can be interpreted as, as lake monsters. In the case of the Mansi photo, this image could be the root of a tree trunk that was pushed to the surface before descending again into the depths. So what I've done is through my animation, I, I took a scale model of a tree stump and I rotated it 360 degrees to show how a tree stump could look like a lake monster from a certain perspective. My analysis of the Mansi photograph, I was trying to show that uh, the head and the neck aren't connected. It, it looks like they are because there's a little patch right here uh, that is actually a shadow from, from the sun coming down, but the head and the neck aren't part of the same uh, creature coming down. But Mansi herself is unmoved by this hypothesis. It has been scrutinized for almost 30 years, and they can call me anything they want and think anything they want, but they cannot debunk the photograph. You know why? This is what I saw. You get parts where it's bouncing around the mud, but then you get another shot that's very clear at the bottom. It's been six hours, and at 30 miles per hour, Scott Martis has covered most of the deep channel, but they've found nothing. Great shots at the bottom. You can see the muscles and everything very clearly. So if Champ or a sturgeon or whatever had been down there, we would have got excellent video footage of it. It's not a question of the equipment we were, we were using. It's just a question of luck if the animals were going to show up, you know. Back ashore, the news from the fixed camera surveillance effort is disheartening as well. That shot right there. Uh, right up and through here, you can usually see something. After reviewing hundreds of hours of surveillance video, it's clear Lake Champlain is teeming with creatures, but there's no evidence of champ. You know, we went through, you know, hours and hours of footage, and we weren't able to identify anything that came up. Um, maybe it's the wrong time of year. Still, Scott Martis is not discouraged. He intends to continue his pursuit of champ, despite the disappointing result of this expedition. Everybody has to, to look at the available evidence and make up their own mind on that. If I turn out to be wrong, I could at least be justified by saying, well, look at, look at, look at what I base my, my belief on. There's this body of evidence over here. Scott Martis and Sandra Mansi are drawn together against a world of skeptics. Hi, Sandra. We've met before. I'm Scott Martis, cryptozoologist. Hi, Scott. How are you? Among experts, opinions on Champ's existence range from guarded optimism to something more hopeful. I think that Sandra Mansi is probably a sincere, honest eyewitness uh, who just happens to be wrong about what she saw. Yeah, I do occasionally have people come and tell me they've seen something bizarre and then you sort of ask enough questions to say, did it have this kind of mouth or was it doing this or was it in this part of the water? And then you can say, ah, what you've seen is a sturgeon, a sea lamprey, uh, um, you know, spawning population of minnows. I still think it's a big fish, if it's going to be anything at all. Echolocation only exists in those creatures that have a highly evolved communication center, like whales and dolphins. I would like to know what it is, but if we do find out, I hope we leave it alone. In fact, the eyewitness accounts are so common and apparently credible. In 1982, both the Vermont House of Representatives and the New York State Senate passed laws to protect Champ. Even without definitive proof, the creature was put on the endangered species list as a precaution. The law will protect the creature if anyone eventually does come upon a Champ. And until that happens, those who are inclined to believe can take some comfort in the intriguing scientific findings generated from these investigations. The echolocation found in Lake Champlain